When you're applying to medicine, medical schools and universities look for a number of things within their students. They look at your interests, your extracurricular and overall how you are as a student. But another thing that a lot of schools look into is the sort of extra reading that you do in your spare time related to medicine. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Jacare and I'm a student studying in London. And in this video, I'm going to be going through a few books that I highly recommend for aspiring medical students or medical applicants that I think will really help strengthen your personal statement and your entire application as a whole. These are all books that I've read myself and books that I feel like have definitely helped me get a better understanding of medicine and played a big role in my application and how I came across in interviews. You may also notice that the background is a little bit different. The reason for this is because I'm currently in the process of moving houses and my desk right now is really messy and so I'm borrowing my sister's desk for the time being. As usual, timestamps will be in the description below so you can jump around and find exactly what you're looking for without wasting any time, as well as Amazon links to all the books that I talk about in this video so that you can quickly find them and potentially buy them in order to help you improve your medical application. The first book I wanna recommend is a book by Paul Kalanithi called When Breath Becomes Air. Um, this is, in my opinion, a really well-written book. It's a book by a neurosurgeon who gets diagnosed with stage 4 metastatic lung cancer. And the whole book is essentially like an autobiography documenting his life from being a medical student to becoming a surgeon and entering the field of research to finding out that he got diagnosed with cancer and essentially just going through his thought process and the life decisions he had to make and how he dealt with it all. This is quite a sad book, but I think it's definitely a really good read. Even if you're someone who's not sure about applying to medicine, I think for both medical students and non-medical students, this is such a good book to read. It's really easy to read, it's really well written, and I think there's definitely a lot to learn from it. Another reason I think this book is so interesting is that you get to experience multiple perspectives. You get to see a book written from the perspective of a surgeon and a doctor and then near the latter half of the book you see it from the perspective of a patient. I think that's a really interesting dynamic and I think it really drives home the whole concept of doctors being the worst patient. I think it's really good in order to help you understand maybe the struggles of being a doctor but also what it's like to be a patient and this interesting dynamic that you don't really get from many books. The next book I want to recommend is a book by an author called Adam Kay and it's called This Is Going To Hurt. The book is actually written by an author who used to work in the NHS as a doctor but decided to quit his job and become a comedian. And for that reason, this book is actually quite funny at a lot of points. The whole premise of the book is that while he was training to be a doctor and while he was working for the NHS, he decided to keep a diary of the sort of patients he'd see and the experiences he'd have working in the hospital. The reason this book is so good is because it's written from the point of view of a now comedian, it's quite light-hearted at points and I think the colloquial language that he uses and how casual he is in the book really makes it seem genuine and gives you an unfiltered idea of what it's like working in such a busy healthcare system. There are definitely sad moments at points and he also documents the pivotal point on where he decided to leave medicine and I think it's definitely a very good read. This is also quite a popular book. Personally, I see this literally in any bookshop I walk into and I think that it's definitely worth the read. I definitely think that one really important thing this book taught me is all about work-life balance and how difficult it can be as a doctor. I think I always knew that wanting to pursue medicine, that it would definitely be a difficult profession to get into and it would also be a difficult profession to maintain. But I think this gives me a really truthful answer or a really truthful image of how hard it can actually be. And I think it's really good for people who might be on the fence about wanting to go into medicine and want an unbiased, unfiltered insight into what it's like. And that brings me on to the next book, which is also another book written by Adam Kay and it's called Twas the Night Shift Before Christmas. This is very similar to his previous book. Um, in fact, I'm not sure which one he wrote first, but I'm pretty sure this one came first, but it's very similar in the sense that it's like a diary entry 
where he documents his experience working for the NHS. But the difference with this book is this book is mainly documenting um, his time working in the NHS during Christmas time. Again, it gives you an insight into what it's like being a doctor, having to work during a really busy period of the year where most people are probably out enjoying time with their family. It should be noted that he talks about loads of things like having to make sacrifices between working and seeing his friends and family for Christmas. And I think that that really gives you an understanding of the dilemmas that you face as a doctor definitely again another good read very light-hearted this is this is like one of those books like i mentioned with the first book that even if you aren't aspiring to become a medical student it's definitely worth picking up and i think that's the beauty of books like these where anyone can really read them he's also got this really cool thing he does where whenever he's talking about medicine or whenever he's including like a really medical terminology or really specific pieces of detail he will always leave a little note at the bottom of the page explaining what the word means or what the concept means and i think that's really good for people like me who are interested in studying medicine and want to kind of have all these interesting facts uh, stored away alternatively if you like the sound of this author but you don't want to pick up a significantly longer book then this is highly recommended because it's a very quick read and you'll still get a lot of insight out of it. Doesn't matter which one you read first, if you decide to read both, even better. But yeah, definitely keep this on your wish list if you're thinking about applying to medicine. The next book I want to recommend and a book that I briefly talked about in my personal statement video, I think. And it's a book by Atul Gawande called Being Mortal. Now, Atul Gawande is a very well-known doctor slash general surgeon if you go on youtube and search him up you'll probably see a number of ted talks by him and he's definitely done a lot to revolutionize the field of medicine so even if you don't read his book i definitely recommend maybe doing some research on him it might be interesting to know a bit about him which you could maybe use to talk about in interviews it's essentially largely about geriatrics which is essentially healthcare relating to elderly people and before going into this book i definitely thought that it was a bit of a boring field it didn't seem like there was much to it but after reading this book my perception of it has definitely changed i think one of the most important things this book taught me is that not all diseases have a cure and sometimes treatment doesn't have to involve just diagnosing patients or subjecting them to scans but sometimes treatment can be as simple as making individuals comfortable and making sure that all their needs are met and that they're given a good quality of life. I think the reason this was such an interesting concept to me was growing up I always imagined that medicine was all about finding the truth to everything and figuring out the diagnosis for all conditions and giving patients the medicine they need but this book really opened my eyes to the fact that that's not actually true and that medicine is so much more than giving people prescriptions and diagnosing them with conditions it's all about treating the patient in a human way and seeing them as an individual rather than someone you're treating and I definitely would say 100% this book has been the most pivotal out of any book I've read in helping me understand what medicine is and changing my perspective of the whole field. Now it's definitely a bit of a longer read and I think it's not as maybe exciting as the previous books but that's not to say that it's not interesting and I definitely think if you want a more mature understanding of medicine or a more in-depth understanding of some of the more taboo concepts of medicine or maybe concepts that aren't talked about as much like death then definitely pick this book up and I don't think you'll regret it. The next book I want to recommend is a book by Rachel Clark called Your Life in My Hands. Now this is quite an interesting book because it's actually written from the perspective of a journalist who became a doctor. I also think books like these are interesting because they give you a new perspective. Yes, you can read a book by a doctor who's known they've wanted to do medicine their whole life, but getting an interesting perspective like the perspective of a doctor who used to be a journalist is really interesting and I think there's definitely a lot to be learnt from it. Similar to the books by Adam Kay, this is written in a journal type way where it's kind of documenting 
her progression through medicine and what she's learned and how she's felt about it. I also feel like as someone who's applied to medicine in the UK, this book was so useful in helping me better understand the NHS. In the same way Adam Kay talks about his experience in the NHS, Rachel Clark also talks about her experience and the pros and cons of the NHS and the things that need changing. And the reason why I think this book is so good if you're applying to medicine is because during your interviews you can be asked a lot of questions about the NHS and what it's like being a doctor and the issues with the NHS because the reality is the National Health Service in the UK is not perfect and there are definitely flaws within it and I think this book does really well to highlight all of those flaws and give you a better understanding of what it's actually like to work in the NHS. And the main reason I think this book is really useful is because when I was doing a lot of interview prep, I found a lot of questions along the lines of, do you think the NHS should become privatized? Or do you think that privatized healthcare is better than public healthcare? And I think this book definitely played a big role in helping me construct a good argument about it and talk about it in interviews where I could mention the fact that I'd read this book which firstly sounds really good during your interview because it shows the interviewer that you've done in-depth research in your spare time but just the contents of this book were really useful in letting me articulate a good argument and come across as someone who definitely done a lot of research on the field of medicine and who was overall very prepared for his interview. Now again with these two books I feel like Anyone can technically still read them, but I do feel these are heavily targeted towards people who have some sort of interest in healthcare. Maybe this one is more for the casual reader, they can still read it and get a lot of insight from it because it is in a lot of ways quite philosophical. But I feel like this book is more so targeted towards people applying to medicine or aspiring medical students. So yeah, if you fall into one of those categories, definitely, definitely, definitely buy this book, give it a read, and hopefully it does for you as much good as it did for me. Now, the next book I wanna recommend is a book that I don't actually have the physical copy for, but I downloaded the ebook version, and it's a book called Suburban Shaman by Cecil Hellman, and it's essentially, like many of these books, a document of his life as a doctor and all the things he learned whilst practicing medicine. Now, it's a, I think, a very good book. This book, along with Atta Gawande's Being Mortal, are two books that I name dropped in my personal statement. A lot of these books I talk about in my interview, but only two of them I actually named in my application, and this is one of them. I think this book is Again, very interesting, kind of like the previous book by Rachel Clark. It's an interesting perspective in that the person writing it wasn't necessarily just a doctor. So Cecil Hellman actually studied in UCL, if I'm not mistaken, which is the university that I'm actually set to study medicine in this September. And he actually started his medical journey in Africa, studying medicine there. And I think the reason that was so interesting to me is because a large part of my personal statement and my application was talking about what I felt about the racial divide in medicine and the social economic divide. And I think the reason this book was so good is because he spends a large portion of the book talking about the apartheid he experienced in South Africa and how black and white people were given different treatment for their health conditions. And I think that was really, really interesting in once again giving me a new interesting perspective of medicine and the idea of how there are racial issues even in fields like medicine. I also love how he is also quite colloquial in his book, similar to Adam Kay where he's a lot more casual and I think the benefit of reading books where the author is a lot more laid back is that you feel like you're getting a more unfiltered understanding of medicine and what being a doctor is like. In the book he documents his, like I said, his journey through medical school, the different jobs he picked up, his life as a doctor in London and just overall what he experienced throughout his life and how that's influenced his understanding of medicine. I think the most interesting thing I um, learned from this book 
was that idea that all patients have a story and he really puts an emphasis on that idea that it's so important as a doctor to listen to your patients and hear the stories they have to say. He talks about the importance of patient interaction, how important it is to sit down and listen to your patients. And I think this is something that's very easily forgotten nowadays with not only just the pandemic, but also with how much technology has advanced and how different medicine has become from the past where it's not just about a doctor sitting down with their patient and with that we have reached the end of the video so if you found it helpful or if any of these books sound interesting do check them out do give them a read and i definitely think that you will enjoy them i feel a lot of these books are relatively affordable and if not then maybe if you go to your local library that they might have a copy but yeah if you have any questions about any of the books i've mentioned or even if there's any videos you want to potentially see in the future let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to get back to you and maybe make a video on whatever you're requesting. Obviously, like and subscribe because it does so much to help the channel and that's been all from me. Goodbye.